Hey guys, uh, it is now time for our, uh, what is it, the 8th um, Java game development tutorial um, episode. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to fill out our sprite class a bit more uh, so we can actually, you know, get some sprites on the screen, which will be really exciting. Um, what you're going to want to do, uh, as you can see, we made these shell methods right here that didn't really do much. We're going to create a couple of variables. Public float pose x equals 0 public float pose y equals 0 these are the x and y coordinates in the world um, measured in game pixels which if you remember right are larger than the real pixels um, and public buffered image called image for right now it equals null and we want to create a constructor public sprite and it will take a float called pose x and a float called pose y. All we want to do with that is we want to say this dot pose x equals pose x this dot pose y equals pose y. The reason now what this does is this dot pose x and this dot pose y refer to this pose x and this pose y up here whereas just pose x and just pose y refer to pose x and pose y. I hope that makes sense. What we're doing is, we, is whenever we create the sprite, we want to create it at a specific location. Like, for example, if you create a bullet, you want it to appear in front of your character, you know, where their gun would be, or whatever. Um, and when you spawn a bad guy, you want them to spawn in a specific location. So that's why we do it that way. Um, so next, we're going to... Um, in the render method, we're going to say uh, g dot draw image this will be done every frame uh, it takes an image um, for right now type real X and real Y and now uh, image dot get width and image dot get height and then null at the end now what these are the first parameter is the image we want to draw which of course is our image right here uh, real X and real Y, these are going to be the X and Y positions, and I will show you why we didn't just use pose X and pose Y in a moment. Uh, Image.getWidth is the, uh, right here, this is the width of the image we want to draw, and this is the height of the image we want to draw. We don't want to scale the image in any way, so we want to leave these the same as they are in the image, if that makes sense. Um, now, why we didn't use pose X and pose Y here? Well, that's because it's measuring x and y coordinates, or these x and y coordinates right here are integers that represent the upper left-hand corner of your image. But whenever I think of a, an object in a game, I think of the position of the object as being at the center of the object. Um, in order to do that, we need to modify things slightly. First off, this needs, these are floats, and this needs ints, so... Um, we'll need to cast this to an int. So int uh, real x equals, now we'll cast to an int, pose x. So an integer that is pose x. And then int real y equals an integer that is pose y. But that's not all there is to it. What we need to do is we need to offset the position so that it appears in the center of the object, okay? That means uh, we need to subtract half of the width of the object and half of the height of the object. So pose x minus image dot get width divided by 2, so half of the image's width. And down here, image dot get height divided by 2. So what we're saying here is we want to offset the position on the x-axis by half of the width so that instead of uh, this being the left-hand edge of the object, it's now the middle of the object. And then the same thing for this. So the very center of the object is where everything's going to be. Um, uh, the, the, the pose X and pose Y are going to appear in the center of the sprite whenever it's drawn. So that's a good thing to have there. Um, now I'm going to create a class real quick. I'm going to call it org test and it's where I'm going to put test code we're going to create a class called test sprite 
and we need to say that it extends sprite. Okay, extending sprite is a good thing. Import our sprite class. Add the constructor because it needs a constructor that matches the arguments that we told it to expect. You know, the float values of pose x and pose y. Now, whenever it says super pose x and pose y, it's referring to the constructor of the sprite class here, which is all good. Uh, we should leave that as it is. But afterwards, uh, we're, we need to do things that are specific for this particular sprite. What's specific with this particular sprite? Well, we want it to be a test sprite, and we want it to have a test image. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say image equals renderer dot load image and give it the path. Um, and let me get look in the game class. What did we use here? Uh, we'll just copy that right there. Also, get rid of this in the main in the game class because it was not necessary. That was just for testing. Okay, so right here, renderer dot load image slash resources slash images slash test dot png. Um, and surround with try catch, of course, because we kind of have to do that. Uh, oh, real quick, go into the sprite class. Um, when we do the render thing, before we do anything else, say if uh, image is equal to null, return. There's no point in continuing if the image is null. Okay, that would be pretty much pointless. Uh, so now we've got our test sprite. We go into game. After renderer.init, um, we're going to need to do a couple of things to get this test up and running. First, say world.currentworld equals new world. That way we have a place to put our sprite so it'll actually do something. And we also put make this new world be the current world. Um, current world. Uh, whoops. Um, world dot current world dot uh, sprites dot add um, new test sprite and it needs a x and y position. Let's just say one hundred and one hundred for now. Uh, I need to import test sprite. Now, if all goes well, we will have um, success. And we'll see our sprite on the screen. I tend to think that's not going to happen. Uh, but why not? What's wait, what's up with this? Why isn't it rendering to the screen? Oh, <laughs> okay, stupid. Um, not you, me. Uh, go into your renderer class. Right here where we said render stuff. As you can see, we never actually render anything. So that's why nothing's happening. What we want to say there is world uh, dot render and pass it G, which is our graphics object. Now, we still fail, and I think I know why. Okay, no I don't. Give me a second here. This is what real programming is like. You never, it never goes according to plan. This worked for me before. It's not working for me now, <laughs> obviously. Let's see here. What could be going wrong? Let's go into the sprite class real quick. I'm going to say system dot out dot print line random string. See if it's actually reaching the render method. It is reaching the render method, so it should be drawing, right? The question is, why is it not drawing? Our pose x and pose y are 100, which isn't out side the range uh, of our screen so that shouldn't be happening or that that shouldn't be a problem um, g dot draw image image real x real y image dot get width image dot get height so why isn't it drawing isn't that kind of weird um hang on Go into the renderer class. Wait, no, don't do this yet. I'll see if it works first. I'm going to see if that transparency um, setting that we set, that we changed from bitmask, should have been bitmask before. Okay, that doesn't appear to be it. What if I get rid of the transparency setting entirely? 
Now what happens? Still nothing. Okay, so don't mess with that. That apparently wasn't the problem. We are getting the image though, right? Okay, I'm gonna comment out the final... No, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna say return raw image and see if the raw image is okay. Okay, something went wrong here. Um, as you can see, our image is drawn to the screen now, but it's not our optimized version. We're passing it the raw one instead. Oh, pff, wow. Okay, I am phenomenally stupid. Uh, apparently, I accidentally told it um, to go ahead and return this final image, even though we never actually drew the contents of the raw image into that final image. I am very sorry for that. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I really don't know how I made that mistake. Um, now, for I'm going to post an updated ver version of the other video uh, where in which I fixed that mistake. Um, now, I'll probably just uh, I'll probably just uh, add an annotation telling you what I did wrong. Um, yes, I'm not sure how I made that. See, even people who have been doing this for years still make the same mistakes. So, uh, okay, what we wanted to do is final image dot get graphics dot draw image raw image zero zero for the upper left hand corner uh, raw image dot get width and raw image dot get height and null now what this is going to do is it's going to fill our final image with the contents of the raw image now if we run the code as you can see our little sprite face here person man thing box square gets rendered exactly how we want it to um, so that's about it for the sprite class um, well no that's not but that's all there is to getting something rendered onto the screen as you can see that's pretty cool right there uh, in fact, if I wanted to, I could, in the renderer uh, method, uh, or rather, let's say, um, we can go ahead and, and play with the update method real quick if you want to see that. Right here in update, um, uh, for the sprite, uh, no, not the sprite, let's say test sprite. We'll override update for the purpose of the test sprite. In test sprite, uh, we want public void update takes a, f a float float delta time and then what we say is pose x plus equals let's say 10 times delta time now this is going to move at 10 pixels per second to the right um, here in renderer uh, before we say world.render, let's say world.update. Later on, we're going to want to put our update uh, call somewhere else, like a different loop, not our rendering loop. But for now, we'll put in the rendering loop. And when we run it, nothing happens. Uh, and that's because we did something else that was rather silly. Here, uh, you remember how we calculated our delta time? Well, here our last time was zero. So system.nanotime minus zero gives us system.nanotime, which is about 42 years. So it's going to move about 42 years worth of 10 pixels per second. So ignore that. Actually, I should forget if it's 42 years. It's 40-something years. Basically, how much time is it? Uh, 46 years, I think. It'll be about 46 years because it's calculating since the Unix epoch, which was in 1970. Uh, so that's going to you know obviously cause us a problem. Um, we can fix that a bit by saying right here that last time equals system dot nano time. That's not an excellent solution, but we'll make a better one later on. Now when we run it, ooh, look at that. Our pixel face person just shoots off to the side, uh, probably faster than they were supposed to. Um, in any case, let's make that one real quick. Now why is he leaving so quickly? That's what I'm wondering. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, right here where we say d delta time equals system.nanotime minus last time, we want to say the last time is equal to 
uh, system dot nano time or else it'll never figure out that this is last time so back in test sprite I'm gonna go ahead and make that 10 pixels per second again and now he moves at a consistent 10 pixels per second across the screen as you can see that's pretty cool right there because that's the basis of uh, how we program the game from now on um, sorry for all the elementary mistakes um, as you can see though um, once we get everything working together properly everything fits together exactly as it's supposed to. Um, if you like this episode, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.